Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing good. I just found out that I hit 200 subscribers. So I would like to thank you everyone for watching my videos and taking the time to learn some new concepts in engineering. I hope to reach 500 subscribers by the end of the year. So in this video, I'll be talking about how a rocket engine nozzle works. If you have an interest in aerospace engineering, how a rocket motor operates and compressible fluid mechanics, Please watch this video as you will find it very interesting. So a typical shape of a rocket nozzle looks like this and the moment it fires it looks like this. Why is that so? Why does that occur? Well it turns out that a rocket nozzle uses a supersonic nozzle which means that the velocity of the fluid will increase when the area increases. This sounds counterintuitive because you guys must have learned in second year fluid mechanics that the velocity of a fluid will increase when the area decreases. But that is only true for an incompressible fluid, which means that the density of the fluid must be constant and the fluid must also operate at a speed which is much below the speed of sound or at Mach 0.4 or below. The moment the fluid becomes above Mach 0.5 and the density begins to change, that, that is when the phenomena is reversed. But with that being said, the fact is that the velocity and pressure relationship will always be constant, which means no matter if the flow is subsonic or supersonic, the, when the velocity goes up, the pressure will always go down. So a rocket engine nozzle is shaped like a CD nozzle, which also stands for converging diverging nozzle. The whole idea for this is because the fluid in the chamber, which is before the nozzle and your oxidizer, they will be at rest, right? So you first have to accelerate the flow to a sonic speed, which is occurs in the nozzle rote because the chamber will be stationary before and then the moment you release the valves they both will mix and the converging section of the, of the nozzle will accelerate the fluid to a sonic flow and the moment it hits the throat it will be a sonic flow and the diverging section or the expansion area is meant to further accelerate the fluid much beyond the speed of sound so that is why you have a nozzle which looks in this configuration the whole idea for this is to create supersonic flow at the exit of the nozzle and that is why you must have the diverging section. When they design the nozzle at rocket companies or at SpaceX or anything like that, they first try and achieve sonic flow at the throat because the condition for that will be optimum expansion. I will get more into that after. If you guys have already taken any type of aerospace engineering course, you guys will know that in a supersonic nozzle, the, the force produced by that nozzle simply equals the mass flow rate times the exit velocity plus the difference in pressure between the exit and the atmospheric pressure times the area of the exit. That is always true and that is a very common relationship which you guys must know because whenever you design nozzle, you, you can quickly calculate the force exerted with that formula. So it's very helpful. So let's now talk about the topic of expansion of fluid. This topic is very important in compressible fluid mechanics. You guys will have to learn this at some point in your career or in your job or anything like that because it is a fundamental concept and it is used all the time in the design of rocket nozzles and even stuff like a car exhaust nozzle because expansion is simply how the pressure of the fluid will decrease as the velocity increases and it is traveling to an expansion section. So it is traveling from region of low area to a very high area region. The first step of expansion is called an ideal expansion. This occurs when you have the pressure of the exit at the nozzle will equal the pressure of the atmosphere. This obviously cannot be possible at all times because the atmospheric pressure is something we cannot control unless the rocket is flying at a constant altitude, right? So if you guys have watched the SpaceX launch, they take off and then they fly at a constant altitude when they deploy the satellites. And when the altitude is constant, the atmospheric pressure is constant. So that is when they can create a very optimal expansion flow because the, the pressure at the outside will be constant and they can control the nozzle such that it'll create a pressure at the exit, which is equal to the pressure outside. In most cases, the flow will expand in either over expanded conditions or under expanded conditions. So let's go, let's get into what those two mean. Over expanded nozzle looks like this. It is simply when the, occurs when the fluid exit pressure is much less than the atmospheric pressure. And then you can see this because the fluid will be compressed and it'll come out much like a straight line. If you guys see any fighter jets or anything like that, they usually have an over expanded nozzle. And the whole idea for this is to, is to not let the fluid expand too much. There is a concept in aerospace called propulsion airframe integration, which means that they design the airframe in such a way that the exit jet of the fluid 
Since it is at a very high temperature and velocity, it will not create any damage to the air aircraft components such as the elevators and the tail. And this is why you will also need to have an over-expanded nozzle for a fighter jet because you will have to increase aerodynamic capabilities and you want the fluid to be less exposed to the outside as possible. So it's designed such that the atmospheric pressure will be greater than the exit pressure of the nozzle. An under-expanded nozzle is what we use in rockets because that creates a lot of force. It occurs when you have the exit pressure of the nozzle is exceeds the atmospheric pressure. And you can tell this because the fluid will expand like that. It'll be more of a conical shape outside the nozzle. If you guys watch a SpaceX launch or a ULA launch or Atlas V launch, initially you will, the nozzle will be significantly underexpanded because they want to create the maximum amount of force. And that is why you have a large plume outside the nozzle. And that is why, in summary, that is why you can see all these shapes of a rocket or a jet in his nozzle. That is it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned something interesting about rocket nozzles and something about aerospace engineering as well. If you guys have any questions or any feedback of my video, if I, if I didn't do a best job teaching or if I confused you guys on some concepts, do not hesitate to leave a comment below. I'm always open to feedback, especially at this stage. I hope you guys learned something about compressible fluid mechanics. And if you guys have these type of concepts coming up in your courses, in your school or in your job, please leave a comment below and tell me how this video affected you guys and how you guys learned some new concepts. Until next time, thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Goodbye.